In this special episode of Neocash Radio, I'm joined by Evan and Ryan from GNM Asset Management. Evan and Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm Ryan. Thank you so much. I'm Evan. Could you tell our listeners a little bit about yourselves and how you discovered crypto? We're both students of finance. We're active traders. Basically, I discovered cryptocurrency in the summer of 2016. I was interested in the blockchain behind it, but what really intrigued me was I'd been trading stocks and what intrigued me was uh, the uh, volatility behind the currency. And if you could really like break it down and use that volatility to your advantage and then be able to make money from it by trading it. Um, so I'd, I'd follow the price every day, but I didn't actually start trading cryptocurrency until it was like 2017, um, February, I believe. And at this point, all coins w- weren't really that popular yet. So it was like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then Evan, um, he started trading with me um, just uh, like maybe seven, eight months back. And he, so we both were profitable traders profitable traders so that's what made us want to do this for clients and what about you evan uh i have a similar background um me and ryan met in high school and we were good friends we both really interested in finance and investing so we always talked about that and he got me started into crypto like he said about uh, about eight months ago and from there uh, we would just talk about it and talk about how we would individually trade by the time i started ripple was right before it really started to get mainstream. From there, we both kept being profitable and decided we should move into something where we can help other people. So you're both, uh, just to be clear, you're both still in school and, and trading, uh, doing both at the same time? Yes. Uh, yeah. We're both currently in college. I'm a dual major in math and finance. Right. And Ryan is also a finance student. So let's just get right to it then. Your uh, your company, GNM Asset Management, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, you're, you're obviously trading and stuff uh, related to that, but uh, what, what can you tell us? Uh, at at g and uh, our priority is to provide market knowledge and trading experience to our clients so we can help them get the maximum investment success in cryptocurrency. Ryan and I try to make crypto trading simple and straightforward and in the end, make it profitable. And we also like to build relationships with each of our customers so we really feel like They can trust us and know that we're trying to help them as our main goal. Um, Right now, what we do is we operate an investment fund that is in um, a diversified number of tokens, and we trade that in a way to maximize returns for those clients and really help them improve their wealth. And then, uh, so I mean, is is this sort of uh, the goal of the company is to keep doing this? Do you have other aspirations? Yeah, so goal, I would say our goal at the end of the day is to make money for our clients because as long as we're making money for our clients, that it'll not only allow those clients to stay with us, but then our goal is to obviously grow the company and bring on new clients. But we more than that, we want to offer because like crypto crypto assets are non-traditional and then it's a non-traditional investment. So we want to like be able to offer those to people who otherwise would never know how to invest or would never be given the opportunity to invest. You guys enter in a contract with your customer, is that right? Correct. And then so they they basically trust you with their funds and then you go ahead and you make the trades on those funds. And then how do you, I mean, how does it work from there? I mean, is, do, do they have separate accounts? Is there profit sharing or how does this, how does it work out in the end? Uh, basically clients can be as involved as they want to be with us. So they'll make their investment and from there, obviously, like they uh, fill out the contract and paperwork. And from there, then we manage the trading and we really manage the fund. They can be as involved as they want. If they can ask us questions all the time about our trading process or our current makeup of the fund, if they want. And if they don't, we'll just communicate with them um, through monthly statements. And every once in a while, maybe some news about how the fund is doing for the month. In terms of how they get returns, um, it really depends on they own a percentage of the share or of the fund. And as the fund grows, their percentage of the fund's value will grow. And if they want to uh, withdraw their returns, they have the opportunity to do so. So that was, yeah, that was kind of what I was getting at was it's, it's one, 
one big fund and then it's a percentage based ownership off of that. Uh, just to just sort of clarify for the listeners and all that. You've you've taken this now. You've you've been doing this sort of practicing this business and growing it and actually doing it. Uh, and now you're you're forming an offshore company and you're in that that process. Uh, what's that like? So it's been it's been an interesting experience. Uh, just at least we're still ironing out the details right now. We've narrowed it down to uh, a few countries, and right now it's just selecting that country. Um, it's it's just difficult because every lawyer you talk to tell. Every lawyer that you talk to tells you something different. So it's like picking out the the value from that. Um, but uh, once we have the country selected, it usually only takes a few days to set up. So we should decide on whatever country we decide here within the next month. And so basically how that works is we're going to be setting up an offshore entity as a private foreign investor. And then people will actually invest in, uh, they'll receive shares of the company, which then pay out dividends. So um, and then if the client, the client say wants to liquidate, then they just sell like the shares back to us. Not as difficult as a process as I thought it would be. It's just a matter of uh, figuring out what's the best fit for you. It's, it's sort of the you're saying that the lawyers each one tells you a different a different way to do things or a different uh, country or a different law to watch out for. Is that how? Yeah. Well, sort of but, works. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's mostly different countries. Um, I've heard we've heard countries from Nevis to uh. So many different islands. Uh, what else, Evan? What other um, what other countries? Estonia, Estonia, Gibraltar, Switzerland. Where we really get each lawyer, you know, they have their own connections and the way they like to do things, and that's probably why you know they might recommend one country over another. And what our uh, what we're dealing with right now is really trying to figure out which one of these countries is going to be best for us and for the way we're doing business. It's unfortunate that, that you know, the United States is, is uh, so difficult to operate in because of the lack of uh, clarity, but uh, that's sort of the situation yeah. we're in. So what's, what would, a, a, you know, if a client, uh, a prospective client wanted to work with you or wanted to, uh, to have you trade funds for them, what would that process be like, that sort of uh, onboarding process? Yeah, so basically, okay, um, so... To be a client, um, you would need to contact us either. We have a website, um, gminvestmentsgroup.com. So you could either contact, contact us there and you could schedule a call with us on our website or you could send us an email. Uh, that's info at gminvestmentsgroup.com. Um, and we would give you more information. Um, you would tell us if you're interested, um, whatever X amount of money you would be interested in investing. Um, and then from there, we would send you the e-contract and uh, you'd fill that out. And then we receive payments. Um, we've done PayPal, um, check Venmo. So we do accept, uh, crypto assets as a form of payment. Um, and then we just convert that to whatever, uh, X amount of money that would be then your percentage. Um, and then we specify on the contract and you'll get a confirmation email once we receive your funds and then, and then you're good to go. You'll start receiving the uh, monthly emails, quarterly emails and updates and so on. Without giving away any of your company secrets, of course, <laughs> what's sort of like you're just, I mean, this is a really interesting thing. And I think a lot of people, a lot of my listeners, I mean, have thought about maybe doing their own funds or, you know, there's this idea that people can trade uh, day trade crypto, uh, you know, is something that is, is, is very alive and well out there, yeah. although a lot of people <laughs> might be losing money on crypto. Um, but then again, not everybody should be trading crypto. They're not, they're not all traders, right? They're not looking for the right things or they're not exactly, uh, they're trading with their emotions rather than with their mind. Um, but anyway, what sort of trading process do you, you use? So that, that's what works out really well for us. Um, so our trading process, um, it consists of basic fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Um, Evan, he takes care of the fundamental analysis part. Um, that's more of a, and that's more of like an individual coin basis. So like, um, whether a company or whether a coin is coming out with some something new, um, we might want to increase our percentage because we expect that coin to rise in value. Um, and I handle more of the technical analysis part, uh, looking at charts on multiple time frames. Um, our fund is made of 23 coins, but I do typically only follow like uh, Ripple, Bitcoin, and Ethereum because if you were to look at those charts, they tend to reflect like the entire market. So unless, uh, I mean, the only reason that I wouldn't do, like the only reason we wouldn't make a trade-off technical would be um, a specific coin has news that may be impacting it, um, which would then we adjust accordingly. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's why our fund is definitely beating the market month after month after month and showing very good returns is because of we can 
we have the technical and the fundamental analysis and we have that balanced out very well. This market, especially, oh, geez, last in January and, and February just sort of took a really big dive. Um, how do you deal with the uh, the highs and lows and the stress of, of trading and watching these big shifts in volatility? With crypto, you really have to be able to handle those fluctuations because the market is extremely volatile. And I believe me and Ryan both do a very good job with that. Um, definitely over the last quarter, the whole first quarter of this year, stress can build up when the market just continues to fall. But with, with trading, we can combat that somewhat in terms of, of beating it. Uh, and we actually, you know, the lows, the lows are bad, but whenever you hit the highs, it's all worth it. Last month, we posted a return of over 75% and nothing's better than telling your clients that, you know, we just made a great return for you last month. And it makes up for those times where it's like that market just keeps falling and you, you feel real, you, that stress builds up and yeah. definitely uh, crypto trading is not made for everyone. Um, you have to really be able to handle that. Your, uh, your value can um, rise and fall dramatically really fast. And I think definitely managing other people's money can increase that stress when it's not just your own money. But in general, me and Ryan are both pretty relaxed people, and I think that tends to help us keep our stress levels down even when the market's tough. Also, we uh, we tend to we even show we do show good returns even in bad times. Like what month was it, Evan? Like January? It was the market was down like thirteen percent, and we still managed to post a return of like one point oh nine percent. That's February. I mean, that's good. <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't know. There's so many people. Uh, Oh geez, I mean, if you looked at Reddit during that time frame, the, the amount of people uh, pulling their hair out was just uh, amazing. And unfortunately, those people who uh, the, the horror stories of someone who mortgaged their house when Bitcoin was and bought it at twenty thousand dollars of Bitcoin, uh, you know, that's I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> but not everybody should be jumping into these, especially all your eggs in one basket like that. That is just really foolish trading. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree. So uh, basically, do you? Uh, do you have like rules for uh, being a, a client? I mean, are you looking for particular people or is it just sort of whomever is interested at this point in working with you guys? Right now, we don't really have any. We're just looking for individuals that are looking to invest their money in this in this space. And we're just here to give them that opportunity. There's not really anyone in particular. Um, we do look for people um, in specific time periods. Like I'd say, uh, last month, we definitely at the beginning of last month and April, we were looking early April and late March. We were, uh, looking in specific, we were looking for investors because I noticed a trend in, uh, the overall market. And you, I called that price breakout that ran it up to like 90 cents. So our, I, we brought on a couple of new investors and one of them, they all posted returns because they came in at, the early they became they came on early April, so then they received that full seventy percent gain or seventy five percent gain in that month. So it's also about timing. You know, you don't want to put in like you said the mortgaging your house at twenty thousand. That's just ridiculous. But it's it's all about timing as well. So um, we do search more actively for investors in certain times, but we always are we always accept investors. So we'll have some links where people can get a hold of you through our uh, our blog post and the the video with this this interview. And then, um, you know, people get in contact with you and whatnot. Just tell them Neil Cash sent you and uh, we'll be we'll appreciate that as well. There is a lot of potential breakout for this year and in a lot of different areas. But sort of like what are you like you're really preparing for or you're gearing up for? Is there any sort of big milestones that you're really looking forward to? So, I mean, I know one of the things Evan will talk about some of the things with uh, some different things that he's watching. But I know one of the things that I've been watching is... Uh, the overall institutional money being involved in the market. Um, I saw Goldman Sachs is opening a Bitcoin trading desk or they're working on opening a Bitcoin trading desk. And uh, I know that that would be a huge milestone for the whole crypto asset, asset space. Um, I think that would be definitely the that will be the day that money as soon as institutional money starts to get involved, that will be the day that, uh, that pr you'll see prices rising again like they did not so long ago at ex incredible rates. Um, so that's one of the things I'm watching. Evan, Evan, you can tell them about what you're watching. Uh, another thing I'm watching, I tend to really focus on finding coins with a lot of potential behind them and a lot of hype. And one coin that we've really been focused on here recently has been uh, TRX with Tron. Their mainnet launching here at the end of the month. 
Uh, their test net's been successful so far, and we really think that something I'm seeing is that their main net could really boost the value of, of Tron. And yeah, I'm always looking for other coins that have similar news like that that might really bring up their value. And that's something that I spend a lot of time researching and doing. Outside of that, we have EVE mainnet launching also in June, and that could also be big. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And um, if uh, people want to get in touch with you, where should they look? They would go on our website at gminvestmentsgroup.com or contact us via email at info at gminvestmentsgroup.com. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.